Bianchis are some of the most beloved bikes out there thanks to their classic styling, that iconic Celeste colour and plenty of historic wins. But here are some things you might not know about the legendary Italian brand. Originally set up in 1885 in Milan in Italy, Bianchi is the oldest bike brand in the world that's still in existence at a very respectable 133 years old. From the very beginning, the company's founder Eduardo Bianchi was a crafter, and as well as making everything from surgical tools to electric doorbells in his front room workshop, the multitasker also made bikes before moving on to motorized vehicles too. From 1897, the brand began making motorbikes and then cars two years later, creating high-end luxury vehicles for customers, much like the bikes they produce today. Unfortunately, the breakout of the Second World War led to the bombing and destruction of Bianchi's automotive factories. Things went from bad to worse in 1946 when founder Eduardo died in a car accident, leaving the company to his son Giuseppe. With post-war Europe in economic ruin, Giuseppe decided not to continue producing cars but to focus on the humble bicycle and its motorised counterpart. It wasn't until 1955 that the company decided that they wouldn't let their automotive engineers go to waste, and so they teamed up with Fiat and Pirelli to form a new car company. They called it Auto Bianchi, and up until 1995, they made small family passenger cars, with their most popular model, the A112, looking like an Italian knockoff of the iconic Mini. The brand also found themselves as pioneers of the pneumatic tyre, being the first of the Italian giants to introduce the new technology on their bikes, just a year after they were invented by John Dunlop in 1887. Bianchi showed they weren't afraid to try new things out. Their Model 1912 bike was a prime example, using front and rear suspension back in 1912. Originally designed for the Italian military, the bike was foldable, enabling soldiers to carry them when not riding. The bike was also groundbreaking in that it featured an integrated front brake, something that hadn't been used much up until that point thanks to the fixed wheel nature of bikes at the time. Bianchi soon became synonymous with top riders in the pro peloton like legendary Fausto Coppi, whose Palmeiras speaks for itself. But one rider's success saw him become one of the company's most demanding customers. Marco Pantani was so determined to win that the Italian brand called his personality obsessive when it came to creating the perfect bike. According to Sarah Macante, the head of Bianchi's research and development, Pantani had very specific ideas about what he wanted. He had 30 different frames a year from us, with different angles and weights on each one. He changed his bike after every ride. I'd go and meet him during the Giro d'Italia and the Tour and discuss improvements with him. He'd ask to have the geometry changed by, say, half a degree, just to make sure the bike was absolutely perfect. He'd want different angles for different races. He'd ask us to tweak the length of the top tube by a millimetre or by half a degree. Pantani was quite obsessive. One of the most iconic aspects of the brand is their affiliation with that paint job. Called Celeste, the origins of the unique turquoise colouring has been the subject of plenty of speculation over the years. One claim says the colour comes from the colour of the sky above Milan, where Bianchi made their first bikes. Another says Eduardo Bianchi borrowed the colour from the eyes of Italy's Queen Margherita when he taught her to cycle in the early 1880s. People say that he used the former royal crest as a foundation for his brand's logo. The least romantic claim is that Bianchi bought a load of paint on the cheap and mixed it all together to create the iconic Celeste you see today. Whatever the reason, God bless the moment in history that gave us this beautiful shade of blue. Or is it green?